today is Thursday, October the 12th, and welcome to Sunrise with Wayne and Pat. Sunrise with Wayne and Pat. I'm trying to step I off. Had to, no, I, I had know. to bring you back in this morning. <laughs> How are you doing? We're at the Paramount Theater, downtown Goldsboro, where there's so many things always happening. And of course, this time of year especially, they're gearing up for a great holiday season. We'll tell you about some of the things that's going to be going on here at the Paramount here in just a few minutes. But first of all, this is indeed Thursday, October 12th. It is Columbus Day, the official Columbus Day observance. So we're going to find out now what's special, what else is special about today besides being Columbus Day. Today being the 12th. Today is Free Thought Day. It hurts when I do that. Anyway, it's also International Moment of Frustration Scream Day. Mm -mm. Uh, okay. It's also Spanish Language Day. It is Stem Cell Awareness Day. It is also World Arthritis Day. And a lot of people are very familiar with Mr. Itis. Arthur, too. That could be every day. It could be every day, in fact. World Arthritis Day, yeah. Tomorrow is English Language Day. I wanted to throw that out there. Friday the 13th. Ooh, tomorrow's Friday the 13th. Yes, it is. Our lucky day. Okay, let's see what else is going on around. Oh, here's today's trivia question. The category is the Bible. That's the category. A lot of people are familiar with that book. And the category being the Bible. And the question is about domesticated animals. Domesticated animals. That's anything from horses and, and, uh, and poultry to dogs and cats. Domesticated animals. Animals you have around the house. Domesticated animals. What is the only domesticated animal not mentioned in the Bible? The only domesticated animal not mentioned in the Bible. I guess we can include camels there too, can't we? Anyway, there you go. That's the question. We'll have the answer for you in just a few minutes here on Sunrise. Okay, what else is going on? We got the pink plunge, right? Oh, that's pink on the 21st. Plunge. That's the pink plunge. It is. Going on at the cliffs of the New State Park there at the swimming area. On Saturday, October 21st, it all starts at 11 a.m. and it goes till 2 p.m. and everybody's invited to attend. And the way it works is that you jump in the lake. <laughs> yeah. jump in the lake I mean, that's a simple way of putting it. Hey, look, I hear that all the time. Hey, go jump in the lake. It's uh, the pink plunge. You can go and get information um, and make your pledge to the pink plunge by going on, on, on text to uh, pink plunge at 71777. Text the words pink plunge, no spaces, to 71777. Participants are encouraged to collect pledges from friends and family and co-workers and then dress head to toe in pink and then plunge into the autumn waters of the park's swim beach to benefit the Southeastern Cancer Care. It's a great activity for co-workers, sports teams, student groups, other community-minded organizations to participate in while having fun for a great cause. That is going to be a lot of fun. The um, Southeastern Cancer Care Cures for the Colors benefits, as does the Arts Council of Wayne County benefit from this event. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. So dress in your pink and, and jump go, in the lake. Go, right, go for a dip. Go jump in, go jump in the lake. Okay. I hear that. I also hear go soak your head and also all kinds of stuff like that. Well, that's not a good thing, though, is it? Okay, never mind that. Anyway, anyway. Also, yes, there's more. There is more. The 150th National Grange Anniversary Celebration is coming up. Sponsored by the Grantham Grange. Admission is free. This is on October 28th. That's a Saturday. And it will take place at the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fairgrounds on Highway 117 South at Dudley. You know where the fairgrounds are. Events. Listen to this now. This is some of the just a few of the things going to be going on out there. The five. They've got a 5K run. They've got all kinds of entertainment. They have a chili cook-off and a mule drill team. That you will love. I promise. You got to see this. A mule drill team. They've got all kinds of kids uh, events. They've got farm equipment on display. They've got a cornhole tournament. 
They've got live auction, a live auction. They've got art displayed. I don't know who art is, but he'll be on display. Uh, they will also have uh, local vendors and crafts, motorcycle exhibits. Right up your alley. That's right. Antique cars and tractors. Ooh, also right up alley's alley. Anyway, but this is the very important part. This is the very important part. One of the most important parts is going to have a flag retirement ceremony, U.S. flag retirement ceremony, and that'll be put on by the Boy Scouts of America. And they got a whole lot more as well. The 5K run, by the way, starts at 8 a.m. Vendors and entertainment from 10 till 5, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now, to register for any of the events or for more information, search on Facebook or call Linda Crawford. Linda Crawford, her number, 919-689-3135, 689-3135, or call Diane Mazingo at 734 tree 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 Grantham, it say, does Grantham it? Grange. It doesn't say. Search for us on Facebook. Grantham Grange or... I'll see if I can search it and I'll share it. There you Wayne go. Wayne County Government. There you page. go. All right. Um, you know, the Center Stage Theater is celebrating their 40th anniversary. Wow. 40 years Center Stage Theater has been up and running in and having fun and all that here. And this year, of course, no different from any other, they repeat their Christmas Carol play, which is extremely popular this time of year, especially. Is it this time already? It is, well, it's December 8th, but I'm wanting people to mark it on your calendar, make ready for this, because you don't want to miss this. And their, uh, their uh, Christmas Carol performance will be the 10th year that they've done this. The 10th annual Christmas Carol performed December 8th, 9th, and 10th, that's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 7.30 and 7.30 on Friday and Saturday, and then a three o'clock matinee on Sunday, December 10th at the Paramount. Individual tickets, 15 to $18, which is really a deal. You go to Raleigh to watch the Christmas Carol, you're gonna spend twice that much. Reserve seating available. Since, listen, check this out. Since 2008, Center Stage Theater's A Christmas Carol has become downtown Goldsboro's tradition and Center Stage Theater continues to improve upon the annual production. Join Center Stage Theater as they experience Scrooge's astonishing personal transformation from bah humbug to Merry Christmas. And of course, don't forget Tiny Tim. You know, Tiny Tim? Tiptoe through the tulips with me. You know who Tiny Tim was? Oh, okay, you know who that is then, very good. It's a different one, though. It's a, it's a different time. It's, it's entirely, it's another, huh? He played the ukulele. He was married to Miss Vicky. Yeah. Okay, never mind all that. You knew all that. See that piece of paper? I just fly away. It's a full away. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We've got a blood drive. A blood drive. This morning at we, 8.30. We all need blood, and it's this morning. At 8.30? At 8.30. Eastern Lane High School. Where is it? Eastern Wayne High School. It's at Eastern Wayne High School, and it starts at? 8.30. 8.30. This morning. At Eastern Wayne High School this morning at 8.30, and it'll all be over by 1 p.m. The best way to do this is to make an appointment. You can make an appointment by downloading the Red Cross app. You go to redcrossblood.org, download the app. All kinds of information on there. It's great. It's great, the redcrossblood.org app. Find out where the blood drives are, find out locations and phone numbers and information. If you can't give blood, that's okay. You can volunteer time. You can volunteer an hour a month or 40 hours a week if you wanna. You can volunteer whatever time you have available to volunteer for the Red Cross. How you, you volunteer? You volunteer. Let me tell you how you can volunteer. There's a couple of ways. You can volunteer by calling 919-735-7201 Goldsboro Public Library. That's a total <laughs> what? No. No, we don't have anything there, do we? No, okay, we let's do go not. to Mount Olive. It's at Mount Olive at uh, the Steel Memorial Library. 
today. You need glasses. Hmm? You need some glasses. I don't need glasses, but who's there? Mm -hmm. Hello? Mount Olive Teen Movie Night for ages 13 to 18 is this afternoon beginning at 4.30. The movie is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It's rated PG-13, and it starts at 4.30, and you can register if you want to register by calling the Mount Olive Public Library at 919-299-8105, 299-8105. Mount Olive Teen Movie Night, 4.30 today, goes for a couple of hours. And then tomorrow, uh, Friday at Steel Memorial Library, they have Google Docs. Google who? Google Docs. Google Docs. Google Docs. Explain. It says here, intermediate computer users will learn how to use Google Docs. It's a free web-based application in which documents and spreadsheets can be created and edited and stored online. Google Docs, apparently a software. Let's go to our interview. Why don't we do that? Okay. Who do we have? Well, we or have. Is that a surprise? Well, no, it's not a surprise, but we have. It's a very special program. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this coming up. It's a young lady named Chanda Best. Chanda Best has a story to tell, and it will amaze you. And you got to hear this, okay? You could find yourself in a similar situation. And if you do, will you know what to do? So we're going to go to our interview now with Chanda Best. That's up next on Sunrise with Wayne and Pat. Today we're at Berkeley Mall and we have a story. What if you are in a place of business and all of a sudden you hear screams, you hear somebody yelling, help, help. You hear uh, somebody yelling, begging for help. Uh, the sound of desperation, the sound of danger, the sound of somebody in need of help. What would you do? Would you run to it or would you run away from it or would you just stand there? Well, today we want to talk to Chandra Best. And Chandra Best uh, had that experience here recently at a local restaurant and here's her story. Chandra, I'll ask you to tell us exactly what happened. Tell me what happened. Well, exactly what happened. I was at a, a restaurant here in Goldsboro, and um, just got finished eating with a couple of friends of mine, and um, I heard a lady screaming. Um, the first time, it didn't really register that, you know, there was an issue, and then the second time I heard her, I knew that something was desperately wrong. Um, mm -hmm. And so the second time, I, I, it got me to my feet, and I took off running. Um, towards where she was screaming and by the time I got to her um, there was people standing around her and I didn't really know what she was screaming about because she had her back to me and um, you know, when I got close enough to, to get to her um, she turned around and she had a little baby in her arms and, um, and when I saw the baby he was blue. The baby was blue, what does that mean? Um, well, 99% of the time, if a baby's blue, he's obviously ch choking on something, mm -hmm. his, he or her, because um, that's what kids do. They mm -hmm. put stuff in their mouth. So 99% of the time, that's what I've always been taught. Um, they're usually choking. So that was my first, my gut instinct that this kid was cho was choking on something. So what was your first, what's your first instinct? <laughs> what do you do first? Well, the first thing I did in that situation was I grabbed the kid from her and, um, and immediately started doing what, I was taught to do and um, put him in the right position, lowered his head down, gave him five back blows. Um, a back blow? What's a right. back blow? Back blow is um, when you use the palm of your hand on the back of the child between their shoulder blades and you give five. Um, it's actually pretty hard blows because um, you want to dislodge whatever that is that's, mm -hmm. that's making that baby okay, choke. Okay, now you knew the child was choking. That was that was a given, right? I, there was no question about it. I, yeah, I mean, I pretty much knew. So there was no point in looking in the mouth? Not at that time. Not at that time. Because I knew it was completely, it was a complete block. Complete block. That's right. So you turn the baby over and whack him on the back between the shoulder blades. That's right. Five times. What happened? Um, he he threw up a little bit. I, I felt some moisture in my hand because my left hand was under his chin. I was holding his head, 
and holding it down and so I was giving the back blows with my right hand and I felt some liquid in my hand so I knew that the, the airway must have cleared some because mm -hmm. there was some liquid fluid coming out and when I did that I lifted him up and um, to see it was he breathing you know what was going on and when I did I either it went back down or I knew he wasn't breathing at the time so I had to go back and do it and, again and do it again that's you right. knew it wasn't right that's right now we're talking about an infant that's right an infant, uh, and of course, I'm not trained in this area, so I would be afraid to hit him too hard or too soft. <laughs> yes, I wouldn't know what I was doing. Now, you're trained in this area. That's right. So how hard do you hit an infant like this when you know the infant's training um, without hurting him? I don't know. It was just instinct, I think, because at that time, all I knew is I wanted him to breathe again. I, right. I wanted right. him to breathe again. Let's have a demonstration. Okay. I want you to whack me in the back. <laughs> like I, I was want like, you to whack me just I like don't you. know if I can. Sure you can. Now, no. if I throw up or something, that's another story. Right. But now I want you to whack okay. me just, all right, just like I was having trouble breathing or something. Yes, Go ahead. sir. Hit me in the head. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, probably, it was, I would say it was more okay. than that. I just, I harder than that. I was comfortable hitting you that hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was harder than that. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I knew that there had to be a force to get whatever was lodged in there out, and it didn't matter. You but know. you had to get it out. Yeah, that was the most important. In, in a case like that, and I, and I know the important thing is to dislodge whatever's there. That's right. Did you feel that maybe uh, if you hit the baby too hard, it would cause damage? I wasn't thinking that You're at all. You're not thinking about this. Just no. get that out. Of That's the, right. Now we can deal with the other. Deal with the other stuff later. That's right. All right. What happened? Well, after the second time going down, um, I gave him three more back blows and on that third back blow he started screaming he started screaming and crying okay so it worked and if he was choking he wouldn't be able to do that that's right <clears throat> it was the best sound in the world <laughs> it was the best sound in the world that so baby crying the baby crying and screaming like that is certainly good, a good sound absolutely right, what did the mother do um she was screaming and crying also <laughs> <laughs> i don't think she realized at that moment that it was dislodged that he was okay because she, I, she, I could still see that panic on her. She kept saying, "Is he okay?" And then that's when I assured her, "Yes, ma'am, yeah. he's fine. He's fine." Well, with fine. the baby screaming and crying, uh, that is possibly alarming to a mother like that that's gone through this yes, for the sir. last few minutes, and it had to be, it had to seem like hours instead of seconds or minutes. Yes, sir. To her. So. Uh, when the baby is screaming and all that, what, what happens then? Did someone call uh, rescue or? I, I remember during the whole, I guess the whole thing, I remember hearing someone calling now mm -hmm. when I could hear them in the background, mm -hmm. giving like the address, we're here and telling them. So I knew that they were on the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then the baby stopped, stopped crying and I, he looked up at me and didn't know who I was. And he had a confused look on and then he, then he looked over and saw his, uh, it was his grandmother mm -hmm. and he reached out for her. So I knew that his brain was still probably working like it was supposed to because he recognized who she was and wanted her. When a, a child is choking like that, there could be brain damage. Absolutely. Uh, oxygen not getting to the brain could, could end up very seriously. Yeah, in just a few minutes. Now, uh, so, and you know now that the child is okay. Yes, sir. Yes, you, sir. You've talked to I've the mom. I've talked to the mom. I've talked, I've seen him. Um, actually, they came out to um, our church that Wednesday. This happened on a Monday. I invited them to church Wednesday night, and I was able to share that testimony of what happened that, you know, God put me there at that moment to help that kid. And so he was there running around, praising the Lord, just like we were, that he was alive. How old was this child? He was one year old. One year old. That's right. Happened. Yes, sir. Now, I had alluded to the fact that you're trained in this area. That's right. What do you do? Um, I actually, I am a safety manager for Seeger's Fence Company, and I teach CPR and first aid, um, along with a couple other classes, but that's one of the classes that I to, do teach all our employees. How often do you come to the restaurant you attended that night? Um, that was the second time probably this year that I've been in So that. not very often? Not very often. That's you just happened to be at this um, particular I was, at that particular time at that particular night. It was ordained by God <laughs> that day, that <laughs> night, yes, sir. The um, so uh, tra you're trained in this and you hold classes in this, yes, sir. Uh, in CPR training. What are some of the misconceptions people have about CPR? What what do you have to when people come to your class? You try to teach them the right way of doing it, and they say, oh, I thought you did it this way. 
What, what are some of the misconceptions they might have, misunderstandings? Well, one thing is they always say, well, I, I won't ever have to use it. That's one of the things I hear. Huh. You know, they, they're like, oh, i got to take this class again, because you have to take it every two years. Um, and they're, they're, you know, it's like, oh, I've, I've taken this already. Mm -hmm. I already know. Um, but it's, you might have to use it. I've had, I've been certified since I was 16. I'm 40, and that's the first time I've ever had to use it, and I am glad I've had to take it so many times. So without your help that night, there could have been a very sad it, it could ending have, to that story. It could have ended very, very sadly. Yes, right. sir. So they are under the impression they may never have to use this. That's right. That's right. You've been certified since you were 16, as I understand you to say, and now you're 40. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of a, math. That's, a, that's yeah. 20, 24 years. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. And you've had to use it now the first time. First time. Do you uh, recommend this? I recommend it 100% because um, there was a lot of people standing around didn't know what to do. Maybe they did know what to do and didn't react. You know, um, I'd, I'd already made a choice before that no matter what, I'm jumping in. I've decided I'm choosing to do whatever it is, right, wrong, and different, mm -hmm. that I've already, you know, beforehand in, in, any, in any emergency, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. Well, that so. was your training. Yes, That's sir. your training kicking in. I believe so, yes, sir. All right. Uh, I want you to show me. We brought a friend here. This is your buddy that you uh, use in your classes. That's right. So uh, does he have a name? No, just okay. Baby Blue. Baby Blue. Well, <laughs> Baby Blue should have a name. That's right. All right. That's what we're calling it. Okay, Baby Blue. This is yes, what sir. you use in your CPR training. That's right. So uh, demonstrate to me, if you would, what you did that night. Uh, to save that baby's okay. life. Okay, the first initial thing when I, I grabbed him, um, you want to put a hand under his neck because under. you want to support that head and you want to put it under his chin because you don't want to block the airway, you don't want to block the nose or the mouth. Okay. And you also want to use gravity when you're using, when you're dealing with an infant or a child that's, you know, this small. Uh -huh. You're going to use gravity so you're going to lay, put the head down toward the ground. Okay. Because whatever's going to be dislodged, you want them it to come out, and it's going to come out of the mouth. So you want it to come out and use gravity, and hopefully that's right. Okay. Um, so your initial thing is to do to give the five back blows, and that's between the shoulder blades here. And you're going to just use the palm of your hand, your the bottom right. here. Right here. Okay. And you're going to give the five back blow, blows, one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're going to raise them up, and you're going to give... Um, chest compressions and you're going to give five compressions and you're going to continue to do that until it dislodges. And then you do that again. That's right. And then you give him five and then mm -hmm. you turn him over. Five and five. Five and mm -hmm. five. Yes, sir. All right. Now the, the chest compressions here, how did you uh, do that? You just used your fingers. Is That's that right. You use your um, first two fingers, the pads of your first two fingers and you want to use it on the middle of their chest and you also you want to keep that head down. And when you're doing that, it's going to you know, maybe force whatever's lodging it in there okay. out. So that's yes, another sir. another way to do it. And if that doesn't work, turn them back right. over again. Do five there, and then five there, and you keep doing that until it dislodges. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. And then, once it's dislodged, is everything okay, or do they need to be looked at by a doctor, or? They need to be looked at by a doctor because you want to make sure that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, in that moment, because you, it is a lot of force that you're giving the mm -hmm. kid, and um. Yeah, you definitely want to get some medical, you know, advice at that time. Make sure he's okay. He or she is okay. When you first got your uh, your training, who trained you? I got my training through the American Red Cross through um, NC State. Yeah, yes, sir. Through the American Red Cross. That's right. And we happen to have a chapter here in Goldsboro and Wayne County. Just thought I'd mention that. Uh, 600 North George Street, 919-735-7201. If you're keeping up with that sort of thing. Yes, sir. All right. The American Red Cross at NC State. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you hold classes. Where do you hold classes? Um, I hold classes at work. Um, we have 15 different offices in North Carolina and South Carolina, and I just travel to each office and do the What, what do you do for Seeger's Fence? I am their safety manager because um, uh -huh. we, you know, we build fences, we install fence, um, we manufacture and install, so we do manufacturing and construction. So. Just thought I'd mention that good fences make good neighbors. Who said yes, that? Somebody said that. I don't know who I said don't know. that. Somebody <laughs> said that, though. That's right. so, uh, so a safety director there, and you travel to all of the uh, Seeger's Fence Company locations and, and hold classes. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Very good. Well, yes, Chandra, I, I, I appreciate uh, your, your telling us this, uh, you're sharing your story with us. Uh, what would you recommend? Would you recommend everybody, as you mentioned a moment ago, get CPR training of some sort? 
is there a particular, what would they learn first that's most important? Either the chest compressions or uh, if somebody has a uh, heart failure or something like that, what, what's most important? Right, most important is, is I mean, we use a check, call, or care. Um, first, you want to check the scene, um, decide if you want to call 911 first or care first. And if you take that class, they go through the steps on, on exactly how you're supposed to deal with each situation. They go through different scenarios so you know exactly what to do, um, depending if it's a child, you know, a teenager or an adult, I mean, th that class will, will let you, will teach you what you need to do. Okay, so take a CPR course. That's absolutely, right. take one, take one. Whether it's, and I believe Wayne Community College offers uh, CPR classes yes, as well. There's many options you can, you right. can take. Excellent, well I appreciate you talking with us very yes, much sir. and congratulations and, uh, and I appreciate you sharing your, our, your story with us. Yes sir, thank you very thank much. You so much. Yes sir. Chandra Best is uh, with Seeger's Fence Company, but she also saved the life of an infant here recently. Good work. Thank, Thank you. you very much. This young man just appeared. Come right over here. Gene McClendon. What's your name? Gene McClendon. All right. Gene McClendon is here with us. And uh, come right over here. We're going we're to mention uh, uh, that you're here and you just showed up all of a sudden at the Paramount Theater. Why are you here, Gene McClendon? Well, today we're in here to buy tickets for the uh, North Carolina Symphony. Symphony. <laughs> Symphony, yeah. That's right, I'm an actor, I get good diction. <laughs> All right, the symphony is coming up, uh, it's the, uh, the Holiday Pops concert, as I recall. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that will be coming up in November for the Holiday Pops concert, mm -hmm. that the symphony comes every year here to the Paramount Theater. Yes, they do, and it's very good. It's just outstanding. They mm -hmm. love coming here, in fact, I've heard them say it. Yes. They enjoy coming here because this, this uh, auditorium is just a magnificent place. The, the acoustics are wonderful. In fact, you have a, had that experience as well with the acoustics in here, haven't you? A couple you? of times. A couple of times, <laughs> yeah. All right, well, good. I'll let you get on getting your tickets, okay? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to make the announcement about the symphony coming. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> that was, who was that? That was Jane. Jane McLennan. <laughs> Actor, thespian, just all around nice guy. All right. Okay, now I will insert that at a point, okay? Okay. All right. We're going back now, right? We're going back somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure where we're going back to. <clears throat> but you know, he <coughs> fell right in place, Doug. Hmm? He fell right into place. Oh, I know. Right after the interview. He did, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Okay, so we can, call, we can start back with that. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. And we thank you, Gene, for making that appearance. Thank you very much. And coming up, would you hold that, please, ma'am? Look, just lay it right back down, Wayne. I'll we'll put it right there, okay? Yes. Uh, coming up in Pikeville, there's going to be a fun fall fun fest. It's a fun. Fall fun or it, fun fest? Well, it's a fall fun fest. Well, it's a fall fun fest, but I said it was a fun fall fun fest. And it's on October 14th. This Saturday. That is this Saturday. Yes, it is. It is this Saturday. It starts at 4. The, fall, the Fun Fall Fun Fest starts at 4 in Pikeville. Enjoy a car show from 4 to 7. You'll enjoy vendors and games and food and rock painting, pumpkin painting, apple cider, and fun for all. It's a fun fall fun fest in Pikeville. Uh, doggy costume contest. Bring your bring rover and make sure you dress him up. And uh, there'll be a trunk or treat from 7 to 9, and a haunted house from 8 till 10. And from 8 to 10, it'll be haunted. We don't know about other times. Look out, rather come out and enjoy. <laughs> a spectacular event. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's it, that's it, that's it. Sorry. Five, four, three, two, one. So come out and enjoy a spectacular event. Right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, here we go. What else here? Look, we got, we got more. No, he's not here. I'll take a message. Here we go, we got more. It says here, and I can't because it's so teeny tiny. It says this is the arts um, ceremony, the art installation ceremony. Oh, is that what that says? That is what it says. Okay, tell it me about it. It is Friday, October the 13th. 
And if right you have here. been downtown, you will notice that Dino has been removed. The the big the big, uh, big dinosaur. All oh, right, that sat across from City Hall there. Yes, he has been removed. Okay. And that is because they're fixing to bring in new artwork. New artwork coming in. That is correct. So the art installation ceremony will take place at 12 p.m. downtown Goldsboro. And I believe it will be on the City Hall steps. Hmm. Oh, that sounds oh, good. Very good. That's this Friday? At, That's this Friday. At what time? At 12. Noon or midnight? Noon, I'll noon. bet. Okay, noon. Be there at noon on Friday the 13th, downtown City Hall on City Hall steps. From 12 until 12.30. 30 or, minutes. Or noon till noon 30. Yes. Just trying to cover all the bases here. Because, see, not, you know, some people are from out of the state, and, you know, like Chicago. Like Wayne Alley? Like, you know, like Tallahassee. Well, most of the time he is way out of state. Saturn. There's a lot of us here from Saturn. I mean, huh? I'm boxing huh? gloves on about this. Oh, time. yeah, boxing, boxing. And I don't, I'm not talking about, you know, wrapping Christmas presents. I'm talking about boxing. Coming up on October 14th, that's this Saturday, right? Yes, it is. This Saturday, yes, it is. There's going to be a championship bout. And in fact, there'll be, uh, be uh, several of them. And then this is called the No Guts, No Glory Championship Belt Bout. October 14th, this is put on by Steve Ashford and Ashford Boxing Club, and it'll be taking place at the WA Foster Recreation Center. It will be great to watch these young men duke it out. And that's, that's what they'll be doing. They'll be, it'll be, it's a strong, strong competition. It's a boxing club. And uh, Steve has uh, taken these young, these young people off the streets. These are young people who were on the street. Taking them off the streets, kind of taking them under his wing. And he's teaching them how to respect people. He's teaching them how to defend themselves. He's teaching them how to make good decisions. This is what Steve Ashford is doing sponsored by a whole bunch of nice people. But it's at the WA Foster Recreation Center. It's coming up this Saturday, beginning at 3 p.m. The fight starts at 4 p.m. General admission is $10. That's all, $10. Now, if you're not a general, it's still $10. It's uh, ringside seats are $20. And if you have a table, if you have a, as many as six people, you can get a whole table for only 100 bucks. That's a big savings. So it's coming up this Saturday, and if you're for ticket information and other information, you can call 919-330-9506, 330-9506. Don't forget Taste of Wayne is this Saturday as well. Is Taste of Wayne this Saturday? Taste it of is. Wayne is this Saturday as well. Oh boy. Downtown Goldsboro. Downtown Goldsboro. Downtown Goldsboro which reminds me that the Maxwell is coming along pretty rapidly and very quickly and still scheduled to be open on the, on the, uh, in March of 2018, just a few months from now, just a few months, less than six months, they're planning on this grand opening for the Maxwell. And I mention that because, well, there's, there's, there's all kinds of, there's bookings available right now. If you want information, there is, what? There is booking, there are bookings available. There is bookings available. There is a booking, some bookings available now. Just, just, just be ready. You're gonna get hit with a phone number, some information here sometime soon about how you can book at the Maxwell. All right, and I mention that because next year, I better not say it, next year it's just gonna be a lot of things that you already know about going on in Wayne County. It's gonna be going on out at the Maxwell. I'm excited about it and you should be too. What a great place that's going to be. It's going You're to be. You're so excited you can't keep it quiet. I can't, can't keep it quiet, can I? It's all a secret. I just lift the bat out of the cag, cat out of the bag. What's going on at the Paramount? What's going on at the Paramount? Ailey 2. Ailey? Ailey. Dance troupe Alvin Ailey, uh, the uh, renowned choreographer from years past. Uh, there is a, uh, he, he will be uh, honored and saluted 
uh, with, an, with a, a tour of Ailey Tour, Ailey Two that's going around the country, the next generation of dance it's called, the next generation of dance, Ailey Two, and it's gonna be here at the Paramount on October 17, beginning at 7.30. October 17th, beginning at 7.30. And on November 4th, an evening of dance. This is sponsored by East Carolina University. East Carolina University, ECU, Saturday, November 4th at 7.30. And then, as you heard Gene mention a little while ago, the North Carolina Symphony Annual Holiday Pops Concert returns to the Paramount Theater. And they do indeed, they love it here because the acoustics are so great. And you want to get into the Christmas spirit. You want to get into the holiday spirit, the Christmas spirit, or the spirit spirit. This is the place to be on November 21st at 8 p.m. November 21st at 8 p.m. That's a Tuesday evening, all right? For information about that and anything else going on at the Paramount Theater, call 919-583-8432. 919-583-8432. Or you can go online to goldsboroparamount.com, okay? <clears throat> GoldsboroParamount.com. Now, the Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities is coming from Jim Mullen. Uh, the Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities having the annual Mayor's uh, Persons with Disabilities Award Luncheon. This will be October 19th at noon at the Goldsboro Event Center on South Slocum Street. Awards will be presented, and Reverend Doug Seymour of Blended Fellowship Church will be the guest speaker. Tickets are $12 and may be obtained by calling or going by or seeing or talking to someone from the City Community Relations Office at Historic City Hall or by calling Shaikole Simpson Carter and Shaikole's number is 919-580-4318 580-4318 okay okay got it got it got it got it did not miss this event this event? Yes. October 24th. As a matter of fact, we will be there at this event. We will? We, yes. Uh, we. 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 This is a... Uh, Dewey Brothers? Yes. Founders, machinists, and mill supplies from 1885 to 1996. This will be... What is this? This is a documentary. It is. This is, is this a, a movie? A, a, a video? I'm not quite sure what it's I'm going to be about. Okay, well, I just know it's about the Dewey Brothers. Let's find out what it says here. It says, this is what it says. It says on October 24th. Can you read? Barely. Oh, I got it. I got it. From October 24th from 7 to 8 p.m., the Goldsboro Branch of the Wayne County Public Library hosting a special program to document the institutional memory of the Dewey Brothers foundry. Over the lifetime of the company, a wide range of items were cast, including metal parts for agricultural implements, steam turbines, gears, steel beams, sewer grates, and manhole covers. Starting about 1900, they also built over 40 narrow gauge locomotives for use in brick plants, quarries, sawmills, and dredging operations. This is going to be happening on October 24th and will be taking place at the, at the uh, Goldsboro Wayne County Public Library at 1001 East Ash Street. That is correct. From 7 until 8 p.m. That is right. It sounds really interesting. And it sounds interesting to anybody, but especially if you're interested in the history of the area. And we, as I was talking with Thomas Bailey the other day, this place is, all of Wayne County is bathed in all kinds of great history here. Some was good, some was not so good. But it's still history. And you can't change history. Good or bad? Coming up in November now. Uh, this, what? Wait. The Dewey Brothers. Yeah. If you go to the Wayne County government page, there is some photos posted that we shared from the Wayne County um, Libraries page. Oh, okay. Of the Dewey Brothers. So you go to the WayneGov.com webpage. Go to the Facebook page. Go to the Wayne, Wayne County, County Facebook government. page. Facebook page. Go to Facebook, Wayne County Government. Yes. Wayne and County. There's, some, um, there's three different posts that have some of the pictures back from the Dewey Brothers. Well, there you go. Yes. Facebook, Wayne County Government. Yes. I mention this now because you need to know about these. Coming up, if you're a veteran, coming up in November, 
course, November 11th is Veterans Day parade and all that. But on November 6th, that entire week, veterans can ride the GWTA buses transportation free. Free. Veterans ride free from November 6th through November 11th. Veterans and active duty military ride buses free November 6th through Saturday, November 11th. Show a military ID or your DD-214 with a photo ID prior to boarding, before you board, and enjoy the ride free of charge. That's great. We'll mention that again. And the ECA Christmas Bazaar, that is bazaar, uh, will be taking place on November 18th at, the, at Wayne Center. At Wayne Center. It is uh, with gifts and crafts and food and activities for all kinds of young'uns. Young'uns? Children. Young'uns. Kids. I know what you're thinking, kids are baby goats, but not always. <laughs> Leave your baby goats at home and bring your young'uns with you, okay? If you want more information about this, call Kim, and Kim's number 919-731-1525, 731-1525. Here's the answer to today's trivia question. What is the only domesticated animal not mentioned in the Bible? The only domesticated animal not mentioned in the Bible is the cat. How about that? That is, correct. that is correct. How about that? Hey, let's do this again tomorrow. We're on every day, uh, Monday through Friday, beginning at 7 a.m. We repeat at noon, then we re-repeat at 5.30 p.m. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and watch us on YouTube at Wayne County Government. Say that again. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and watch us on YouTube at Wayne County Government. Well, all right, that's it for today. So I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Pat Barnett. And this is Sunrise with Wayne and Pat.